Good morning. Uh, today I'm going to be adding a new metadata field to uh, my repository. I have a brand new virtual machine with a fresh install of ePrints on it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a key piece of metadata that I care about just below the title and above the abstract. Uh, so let's get going. I'm going to do this through the command line interface of the repository and I'm currently in the ePrints root directory, uh, user share ePrints tree on this box. Um, my archive name is birdhouse and I'm going to go into the config config D directory. Now most of the fields that are configured on your repository by default are in ePrintFields.pl. So you can see here we have the, the definition creators, which is a compound field and it's multiple. So uh, every time you have a compound field, you have this fields property, which defines the type of the subfields of it. So in this case, a creator has a name and has a unique ID. Um, contributors similarly, uh, contributors have a, a name, a unique ID, and a contribution type which is defined as a set. Um, and so you can have a look through this field to get a feel for, uh, through this file to get a feel for the different uh, types of, um, of, of metadata fields you can have um, and the, the, the way these are set up. Now you can add the fields to this file but um, I'm not going to because Whenever we make a change to a repository, we want to try and avoid modifying existing files. So I am going to create a new file called local ePrint fields. And into that, I'm going to copy the, uh, the, 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 the configuration uh, because it's easier than typing it out. So I'm going to find a set field. Uh, oh, here we go. Is published as a set field because I want to make my field a set. And there is a function in ePrint. I need to remind myself what it is. Um, so I'll look on ePrint's wiki. I think it's called add data set field. Which is the, the uh, yes, there it is. Add data set field. So this is when adding fields, we can add a field to a certain data set, and then we give it a field configuration. So let's do that. I'm going to add this to the ePrint field, and this is the configuration of it. Uh, obviously, it's not called is public, it is called, what should we call it? It is called. Um, type of bird. It's a set and we'll give this an uh, owl, eagle, raven, or penguin. And we might be interested in emus too. Um, we'll even put style as medium. We'll see how that comes out and we might change it later. Now, when we've added the field, we need to run a function to add that field to the database. So we run the epadmin update command on our repository, which is called birdhouse. And that should add, I get this warning here, this is to do with my Linux distribution, but it says added type of bird to dataset ePrint one field was added. To push this through to the web front end, we need to restart the web server. And now if we look in config 
the tools, manage metadata fields. If we have a look on the ePrint, we've got this type of bird field now from config.d, that's where it's defined. There are various ways that, that these fields can be defined and it's missing its phrase. Don't worry too much about the phrase, we'll fix that the easy way later. For now, what we need to do is add it to the workflow. And the ePrint workflow is here. And what I want to do is I want to find the title and the abstract field, I want to add it between there in its own component. Now I believe the, uh, I don't need to do anything now, ePrints will automatically detect that that's changed. So if I now go back to uh, manage deposits and edit this item and details, we now have this ePrint field named type of bird not defined. Uh, whenever you see these uh, square bracketed phrases, uh, um, square bracketed bits of text, it means there's a phrase missing. And this is really helpful because it tells you the name of the phrase that's missing. The easiest way to add these is to click on edit page phrases. So please select the type of bird. That's the help text. ePrint field help type of bird. The name of the field. Type of bird and then we need an option for each field option so this is option ePrint field option for type of bird and the option is eagle and emu and owl Penguin and Raven. Now if we go back to edit item one, we now have this type of bird. Now this is a, a not a required field so we automatically get this unspecified. Uh, to get rid of that I think what we'll do is we will make this a required field because it's very important. Uh, now this is a .pl file, these don't load automatically so the best way is to restart the web server. Now if we refresh this page we have this type of bird we have the help text here, and, and that's added. Um, and finally, what we want to do is add this to the abstract page. So if we uh, if we add this here, we, we, we get this. Um, let's deposit this and make it live. As I'm an administrator, I can ignore all the required fields move it to the repository and we see what it looks like. What we want to do is have this very important piece of metadata appearing in our table. And if we have a look, that's in, in um, you could render.pl. We have this list of summary page metadata. And again, we want to avoid modifying this so what I'll do is I'll just copy this to make it easier. Um, and we'll go back to our local ePrint fields. And what we'll do is we will push onto that. Uh, I think it's unshift puts it onto the top. Uh, so what we want is we want this to be the first thing in this list. And this has been created in the 
um, in the ePrint field, uh, in the um, ePrint render.pl, what we'll do is we'll just push onto this array type of bird. So unshift pushes it onto the top of the array rather than the bottom of the array. So this should, yes, this should work. What we need to do is, um, so the abstract pages are statically generated whenever the item changes. What we've done is we've changed the configuration that generates them. Um, so what we need to do now is trigger a, a manual regeneration um, generate abstracts and it's called birdhouse. Um, these use of unanalyzed values, I believe this is because um, we didn't set a lot of required metadata fields. They're just warnings. Um, and for the purposes of this, there's no problem. And now we have here type of bird, penguin. The, re the reason this comes between article is article is handled uh, separately in the loop from the list of things, uh, from, the, from the list of fields that appear. So now we've added it to the workflow. We've added it to the... Um, to the uh, to the abstract page, and there's one thing left to do, which is the phrases we created. It's probably not a good idea to leave them where they are when you create them through the front end. We want to break them off and have them managed separately. And the reason for this is in the next video I'll convert this work into a bizarre package. Um, so in the Langian phrases we have this zz web config file. What I'm going to do is edit that and you can see that these these um, phrases that we entered through the front end have been added to this file. What I want to do we'll call localfields.xml I'll, I'll create a new phrase file And I shall copy across, move across these phrases. Well, let's, let's copy the whole thing actually so we have the structure from the top to the bottom. And we will remove the phrases from here. So if we're developing, we, uh, we now have them in a, in a nice tidy place. So, if we now check by restarting the web server, this will reload the configuration and we can check that our phrases still work by editing this item and checking the phrases are still there. And they are. So we've now created it. We've, uh, we've got a single file in the config.d directory and a single file in the phrases directory. And this is important for creating bizarre packages, which we will do in the next video. Thank you.